Over here is your toilet. Now the toilet works on two principles. It works on siphoning and it works on gravity. So basically when you fill up the tank with water and you, you pull the lever to flush it, it opens up a throat right down here, which is going to allow for, in this case, 1.6 gallons of water to gush down. When the water gushes down, it's going to find its weakest path of resistance, which is in this case is going to be an opening on the side, which is on the rim. So when the water goes through here, it's going to come out the little perforated holes at the underside of this rim to clean the bowl. And the rest of the water is going to fill up inside, but it's never going to get higher than this hump right here. It's always going to spill over. So at some point when that influx of water comes through, there's more water that, that the, this opening can handle, so it's never going to allow for any air to pass through here. And because water has cohesive qualities, it's going to pull the water and push the water at the same time. And so as everything goes through into the floor, you're also going to pull air through your soil stack. So l let me use an analogy like this. If I, I take a, this cup of water here, and I take this straw, and I put my thumb over the tip of it when it's submerged in the water, and I pull it out, it's going to hold the liquid in the straw. But once I release my thumb from the tip of the straw, it's going to dump it out, replacing that same volume of liquid with the same volume of air. That's a flush. If I pinch the end a little bit, the water's going to dribble out, and essentially that's, that's a bad flush. So when I'm flushing my toilet, and all my waste and water goes down through here into this hump, down into the floor, as it pulls the air, it's going to make that transfer from the liquid to the air at the same time, same volume, causing my system to flush properly. Now because this soil stack is connected to the sewer system, I always have methane gas coming up here 24-7. So with this open to the sewer system, that same methane gas is going to come up through here, go through here, and then stop at this point. So let me demonstrate how the toilet works. As I fill up this tank, which again is 1.6 gallons of water, and I flush it with the lever and open up the throat down here at the bottom, it's going to find the weakest path of resistance, which again is the rim, and of course filling up, be up right below that hump, not going over that. So if you notice, you'll see how it works. So as you can see, the water is going to pass through that S-shaped curve, and then once it gets air in that passage over the water, it's going to back itself up, not allowing for any more water to escape. So that way it gives you that water seal so the methane gas can't penetrate the opening of the toilet and get into your house. And then at the same time, your methane gas is also going to always be going through the soil stack through your roof line. Here's my sink. Underneath the sink, you have this U-shaped pipe, which is called a trap. This trap also has water that's stagnant in there to also prevent the methane gas from coming up from the backside, much like the water in the, in the bottom of your toilet bowl. Because these, these pipes, the toilet uh, drain and the sink drain, go to the same spot. You also have a trap underneath your shower. So over here you'll see that there's a trap underneath the shower, which is going to be a larger type of pipe because you have more water in the shower than you do in the sink. But in any type of a drain on a floor, in a shower, bathtub, even in your, in your toilet, you're always going to have to have an area where water is going to be able to deposit itself to prevent that methane gas from entering into the house. Now in the bathroom, for instance, if you have, let's say, uh, tile on your floor, you can't just tile on top of plywood, especially in a, in a room that has water and moisture all the time. So because you can't tile right on top of the plywood, and, and the reason why is because plywood is compressed of layers of wood glued together. So if it gets wet, it's going to expand and crack the tiles and loosen them. You have to install the tile in what's called Durarock. Over here, this is what's called the Durarock. It's a cement board which has special fasteners to secure this into the floor system, allowing you to then install the tile on top of that, not having any areas or issues with any type of water intrusion that could allow for that to expand, because it won't. It won't. It's, it basically, it's, it's just a concrete board. Now, when you tile the inside of your bathroom, let's say the, the uh, tub surround or, or maybe the shower surround, it's also recommended to use the same Durac in the areas that you're going to be taking a shower or taking a bath. <laughs>